Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me. Let's spend a few minutes looking at a very effective way to paint surf. I'm talking about waves rolling in towards the beach, uh, waves crashing over on top of each other. It's a, it's a really neat way to paint. A lot of people love seascapes, and we're not going to spend a lot of time painting the sky and the sand and so forth. This, this demonstration will be primarily just how to create the effect of a rolling, crashing wave or two. There's a lot of little tricks you can use in this technique that uh, make it much more exciting. I'd like to share those with you. Let's take a look at some of the materials we're going to use. Uh, over at the palette, uh, I mean, you're really going to use two colors for this. I'm going to use primary blue cyan and green blue. These are both my Mary blue colors. They're both very transparent. I've got two containers for water. I have a toilet tissue blotter for keeping the uh, moisture content of my brush under control. And the paper I'm using for this little demonstration is a piece of Fabriano 140 pound cold press Artistico paper. Very, very smooth, very velvety surface, but it has just enough tooth that we can catch a little dry brush technique on occasion. The brushes I use for this demonstration are a one inch and a half inch flat brush. This is a number eight round. And I, I think I'll probably also use a number four round. Now these are all uh, my signature brushes. These are just four of the set of seven. But they're, uh, they're very soft nylon brushes. And they have very sharp edges, which in this case, we're gonna use that sharp edge to really capture the top of the wave. So it should be a fun exhibit or exhibition. And we're also using uh, just plain toilet tissue. I'm sorry, we're using plain facial tissue. That's the toilet tissue. Now, one thing I want to stress in this, this just gets into composition, but it's very important information. When you're doing a seascape or a lake scene, for example, do not put the horizon right across the center of your paper. Move it up or move it lower. If you put it right in the middle, compositionally, you're really doing two paintings, one of sky and one of water. By bringing it down a little bit like this, for example, we see more sky than we do water but it adds to the compositional appeal of the piece. It gives us much more of a, an opportunity to really kind of play with the shapes and stack them as though they're looking out across the horizon at the waves. Now I'm gonna do a couple of real quick sketches here just where the horizon line is. Let's just say this is the, uh, where the sea and the sky meet. And I wanna suggest where a couple of waves are. So here I've got a wave coming in like this and the wave kind of rolls like this. And it comes in like that and kind of rolls. So this is a big wave crashing in. Right back here, there's another one kind of crashing in like this. And it's not a bad idea to take a pencil and just very lightly sketching where these waves are. We need to uh, have somewhere to judge where to put the darkest darks and what areas to leave white. Now here's the key to painting a wave, and this is the one thing I see a lot of people fall short on. A wave is actually curved. It's, 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 it rolls, it's, it's like a tube. Light hits the top of it, but there's, there's shadow up underneath. There's also a shadow behind the wave because as the ocean goes like this, light hits the tops of the waves and there's these little dips between the waves which are dark. We've got to really try to capture those to give the effect of rolling, undulating water. And then of course that big wave crashing over, we're gonna leave some white paper to suggest the, the foam on top of the crash. So let's do this very quickly. Let's take a two inch brush this is a two inch flat brush. I'm just using this to kind of wet some of this area. I want to wet this area above the wave because we're going to suggest a, uh, just a little tiny bit of sky because I want to illustrate one other thing about this that, that I think will help you make a better seascape. I'm just wetting that part of the paper. I'm keeping the area that's going to be ocean dry. There's no reason to wet that at this time. And let's put a little bit of cyan blue just to suggest there's a little sky up here. Now, we're not going to really get too uh, hung up on painting the sky. We're just trying to suggest that there is something above the ocean so we can illustrate this technique. Now I want to come in and start painting the ocean itself. I'm going to leave a little bit of white paper between the ocean and the sky. That's very important. If you look at, look at across the ocean, quite often you get this little, little light uh, shimmer. It's like light hitting the ocean where you see a little balance of, uh, of the two shapes coming together with a little bit of light in between them. And I'm really gonna to try to stress that. So I'm taking some green blue, very clean, transparent teal color. And here I've got the blue paint over here, the cyan blue. Let's come in here very lightly and start putting some motion waves in. But if you notice, if you hone in real close to the camera, you see I'm leaving that little white line right there. That's a very important part of this painting. 
Now if I let the two touch, while the sky is wet, if I let the ocean color touch the sky, of course this can just run, it's going to take off. So I'm being very careful to keep those, those two separated. And we'll just do this much right in here. Now I can rinse the brush off and take the brush that's damp and I'm kind of coming down across like this and I'm leaving some areas of white. If you see that's, there's a little bit of white right in here, that's just white paper. But it somewhat suggests a little wave rolling in. Now here's the bigger wave which is crashing right here. Let's take some more of this blue and let's leave the top of this wave uh, predominantly white. And this is the, this is the edge that's kind of crashing, go we're giving it a little, uh, little agitated edge on it. Like so. And then there's another wave crashing in right here. Again, a little agitated edge. Now here's a key to painting a seascape uh, that I really want you to remember. This is important because don't do too many of these things. I've seen some seascapes that you would swear that a hurricane coming in. There's just, they got 60 waves out there. All we're trying to do is give the viewer some information to work with so they can make a determination that these are ocean waves. We don't need to paint that many. People will figure it out if you just suggest it. A little suggested shapes go a long way, especially with watercolors, because watercolor is such a fresh, clean shape. And I'm just taking some, uh, a little bit of water and kind of moving that around. So if you look at this, we've got a couple of waves crashing in. I'm going to actually shorten this one a little bit, like so. And I'm really thinking about the shapes. Don't just make arbitrary shapes. Actually stop and think, this is a wave. What does that wave look like? Well, it's got a top and a bottom and it's got that little cylindrical hollow tube effect. But you'll notice immediately it's very, very light. There, there's, there's really no uh, sharp darks in there. And this is where we can go back into the green blue and the cyan, the primary blue cyan. And I'm coming up underneath this wave right here. This is where the sunlight is somewhat blocked. And the darker I make that, the lighter that wave looks. Now the wave has a little shadow underneath it. And I'm adding some more to make it even darker. That's a neat way to paint. And I don't paint that many seascapes, but whenever I do, this is the recipe I follow. And it does make for a very effective crashing wave. Now let's take this wave over here and do the same thing. We're coming up underneath it. This also gives me a chance to come in here and kind of agitate that edge a little bit, make that edge kind of as though it were moving. I might even take some clear water and soften that in a couple places. Very lightly soften that just to really get the effect of crashing waves. Let's bring it on out over here. Now down here I'm just taking that same number four round brush and just kind of moving that color around a little bit, just creating some, some rocking motion in the water. And I'm going to take the half inch brush, this is a half inch soft brush, with clear water and just kind of move that around a little bit, just kind of smooth some of that out. You see the sky is drying back much lighter. But you also notice that white line separating the ocean from the, the sky. It goes a long way to create the effect of distance. Now this is very wet. We're going to wait for a second for that to dry. But while it's drying, let's go ahead and drop a little bit more of the blue right in some of these little shadow areas. This is blue cyan, making it even darker yet.
And I'm also going to take some of the same mix of green and blue and just suggest a few little suggestions of movement down here. This is just a uh, natural rhythm of the water. Transparent watercolors are so beautiful, and this effect works wonderful on, on transparent because you get that nice luminosity and you got that uh, that pretty teal color, which uh, almost looks like the Bahamas. It just has that nice fresh look to it. Now I'm coming back into some of these areas and just adding a little bit, a little bit of movement up in here too, using that same number four round brush. Don't overdo it. You don't have to do too much of that. Just a little goes a long way. Further back in the horizon, I can put a little bit of movement back in there. And remember, things are further away, so they can get smaller. So these waves back here are not going to be as big and prominent as the ones up here in the foreground. So always keep a sense of scale with your work. And take a little soft blending on top of that, just to smooth us out a little bit. Makes a pretty convincing little wave crashing over. Now, one thing we need to do, and this is a this takes a very delicate hand to do this, but it's kind of fun. I'm gonna take a little bit of this color, and I'm taking a half inch brush, and I'm gonna just very lightly, I mean very lightly, just pull kind of up like this in a few places. It kind of adds to that effect of a wave crashing over. Now let's just take a little bit of clear water and kind of smooth some of that out up towards the top. Gives the wave a lot more dimension. Feels like it's really kind of crashing over now. Now as long as we're at it, I hadn't planned on doing this. We've got a few seconds left. Let's just go ahead and show how to paint the surf, how to paint the sand, I mean. This, this wave is rolling in. So let's put a little sand in here. Let's take some steel to grain brown. I'm putting a little bit of violet with it. Looking for just a nice, uh, kind of a sandy brown. I'm going to have a little tidal pool up in here. So this is where the water's going to come in like this and you got these little tidal pool things happening. This is fun stuff. Just sit down one day and just practice these things and just play with it. It's just amazing some of the ideas you'll come up with for paintings. And I remember the sand's going to be a little darker right there where the water is because it's wet. And I'm also going to carry just a tiny bit of that sand color, which is the Golden Lake and the Violet, up in this area. Very, very light little wash of it. And what that does, it just, that's all that sand that's churned up in the water from the waves washing in. Now that wave's drying a little bit, let's put just a little bit more dark in here in a few places. Remember, waves have movement there. That's not just a flat shape. That wave is rolling in from the sides like this. And it's also rolling across the tops. So we want to really capture that. And that's what's going to give this piece a lot of depth and dimension. Like right here, for example, this wave is rolling in like so. So I'm put a little bit of dark in there. And then again, just a few little things down here just to kind of help complete the story. Do little ones. Practice little waves like this. Get a feel for it. You'll figure out real soon uh, if, you, if it's too wet or too dry because it just won't get the same effect. But it's a great way to paint and I, I do think you'll enjoy it once you get the hang of it and I, I have no doubt that you will get the hang of it because it's fun. It's fun to practice. It's a very simple little demonstration but it kind of shows you how to get the effect of a crashing wave, light on the horizon, Lots of movement, lots of depth, and even these little uh, little streaming tidal pool up here in the foreground. Quick little demonstration, but I think it's got some good information in it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have a chance, go to my website, sterlingedwards.com. I've got lots of paintings, all different kinds of styles and subjects. And while you're there, check the calendar page. There might be a workshop somewhere in your area. Thank you.